Hello and welcome friends. Welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pens. Today I have for you a quite rare fountain pen which was gifted to me by a well-known uh, fountain pen YouTuber influencer, Polo Cesar. You might know him from his channel ODE, so if you search on YouTube ODE pen, you will find his great, great uh, channel. This guy is an expert in Caveco Sports, especially the modern ones, so check out his channel and you will see interesting, interesting videos. So, he sent me this beautiful, beautiful fountain pen made in his home country of Portugal. And... Um, he was generous enough to send me this beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. It comes in this uh, beautiful green, green color. And it is a fountain pen from the early 1950s. Quite, quite nice. It seems in the design similar to the Parker 51. And uh, I have a Parker 51 right here. I also have a modern Chinese 51A and we will compare them to see what design elements has borrowed this Portugal fountain pen from the famous Parker 51. So guys, this was one of the first fountain pens made in Portugal that I saw on the ODE channel. One of them um, was uh, sent to Waski Square in uh, uh, the United States of America that has another fine, fine channel and uh, I'm sure you know him. Last year, so in 2021, I had the privilege to receive this green one. Waski was sent a burgundy red one and in fact they are four known colors of this fountain pen. This green one, the burgundy red one, a dark blue one, and I also saw a black one and even a, a white one. And Polo says, and I quote, this is not a good pen, but uh, it is uh, hard to find. And um, we will... Uh, check it out so first of all you might want to know the name of the producer of this fountain pen the name is felisa and we have felisa engraved here you can see at the end of the clip and also thermically printed on the plastic barrel so on the plastic barrel we can see Industrias Felisa Portugal. So Portugal Felisa Industry from Portugal. You can see lots lots of similarities with the Parker fountain pen. And in fact I have here a Parker 51. Let's uh, start with the top. It has an interesting, interesting jewel that is similar to the Parker 51, but, but in fact, this is a transparent plastic part. I will show it to you. And also the clip reminds us of the Parker 51 with this arrow shape ending. It doesn't have these feathers at the end of the arrow. Instead, let me show them to you guys. Instead... It has Felisa. It has an interesting, interesting shield with five points. It is one of the elements of the Portuguese coat of arms that are present also on the national flag. And I will leave you the national flag on the screen to see the resemblance. And the name of this particular model, Academica. The word academica means academia or student. So this is uh, quite an entry level fountain pen made for students. Quite, quite uh, 
cheap fountain pen that was uh, available at a reasonable price for students. So, about the brand, the brand Felisa. So, the brand Felisa was uh, started in 1940 and it ended its activity in the middle of the 1950s. This particular brand, Felisa, is linked with the distributor of Cochlean pens in the capital of Portugal, Lisbon. The distributor was called Felicinos e Mechado. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. So, some of the models resemble the English made Conklin fountain pens or uh, the Conklin fountain pens model of that time. But this one resembles quite a lot the Parker 51. And uh, not only in the shape that you can see, it's similar to the Parker 51, but also in uh, the design of the hooded nib. So I have uh, here in the middle the Parker 51, I have here the Academica, and here I have a modern Chinese one, the 51A. So you can see them side by side, and you can see that feed. The Portuguese one has a more generous feed than the other twos, and it has a simple, simple steel nib. And when I say simple, it's quite, quite simple. It doesn't have the iridium tipping. And I hope you can see in this detail shot that it uh, lacks the iridium tipping. In fact, it has that double steel or triple steel ending that gives it a little little resistance in time this particular fountain pen has an interesting filling mechanism and you can see it opens quite quite hard but once you manage to open it it reveals this interesting reservoir which is made out of a transparent plastic and a nice touch the color of the plastic matches the color of the grip section and the body and the type is a syringe feeder so you feel it like a classic syringe and i can't hardly wait to test it we have here plastic on plastic we have here this metal thread that is outside the plastic body and it's quite quite nice as i've shown you the cap is a friction fit, so just look at the transparent plastic ending. Look at it, it goes like this, and it's quite, quite nice. You can easily post this fountain pen, but being plastic on plastic, yes, it will develop cracks in uh, scratches, micro scratches in time, and I prefer to use it uncapped. So, as a size reference, guys, well, it is the same size as a Parker 51, and I will put it also near the Chinese 51A, and why not, I have also some um, Mont Blancs 146, they are the same size so 2146 from 1983 and let me show them to you guys yes you can see them side by side okay with this occasion i will leave on the screen the dimensions of the felisa academica fountain pen and after that, I will do the writing sample. I can hardly wait to write with it. I don't have big expectations because I've already seen the review that was done by Polo on his channel. 
And by the way, guys, I will leave a link to that video at the end of this video. He reviewed the same fountain pen, but in different color. He reviewed the blue one, the dark blue one. And uh, he had some difficulties because uh, this fountain, uh, his version of the fountain pen had uh, some leaks. I hope that I won't get leaks with this fountain pen. I thought to myself to use an interesting, interesting color of ink. First of all, I thought to myself that the uh, turquoise from Faber, from Faber Castell will be appropriate, but I realized that I didn't use for a long time the pink one from them. It is erasable, so if we have some little incidents with this one leaking or something, let's say it is a lighter color and uh, maybe it can be easily cleaned. Some, some of the viewers on one video told to me that erasable doesn't mean that uh, you can clean it easily. And I know the meaning of erasable, of course, if you write on the paper, it can be deleted like uh, eraser with uh, a solution. But also the erasable inks, they are much easier to clean from the surface of the fountain pens. This is my theory. I hope I uh, am right. This is a quite affordable ink. If you want to see its review, I will leave also the review of this ink at the end of the video. So without further delay, guys, let me open uh, it. I will give it a little shake. Look at the wonderful color in the sunlight. Okay. This is the our fountain pen, so it has the same principle of feeling like a syringe. So you have to put this down. It is all made out of plastic. Let me see now. So this is the pink ink. I will uh, put it like this. I hope it can. Um, I will. Insert it in the ink and I will draw the ink. Let's see. Whoa, a nice, nice amount of ink. Okay. Let me take the excess of ink. It looks quite, quite nice. I believe I have a little cloth here, a tissue. I will use it to remove the excess of the ink. Well, it appears to be good. No spillings. This is a fine, fine example. Again, thank you, Polo, for sending me this wonderful, wonderful gift. So, guys, this is a quite rare fountain pen from Portugal. And in a way... It left its country of production, which is uh, uh, the western part of Europe, and reached me that I'm located here in the other part of uh, Europe. And it has a little bit of problem with the ink, but we will see. I uh, have uh, this here for in case of emergencies. So... After you use the ink bottle, remember guys, always put back the cap on. Now I will change the angle of the camera because I want you to see better the writing sample. So I've changed the angle of the camera. I'm sorry guys about the natural light, but uh, it is what it is. I hope you can see. Let me zoom out for a bit. Yes. So this is our fountain pen. Um, you can see that I uh, can screw back in uh, the, this barrel. It uh, unscrews quite, quite rough. And the first problem that I can see, and I hope you can see it too, it is the excess of ink. Let me see, yes. I hope that, let me put it on this tissue, okay, so it has that flow of ink, and I think that this special big, big feed 
was meant like a cork to stop the f the f spill of ink. Let me see now uh, the actual writing sample. So maybe I need to find another perspective, maybe like this. I don't want the sun to stand in my way. So yes, it's better like this. So guys, we have here the writing sample of the Felisa. Felisa, this is the model Felisa. Academica. It was made in Portugal. in the 1950s and this is meant for uh, school use or student use so this is the first problem with it it leaks from time to time okay made in portugal in the 1950s and it has a steel name Steel nib, a hooded nib, inspired by the Parker 51. I'm quite impressed with this nib, it doesn't scratch and yes, I think I can call it a smooth, smooth nib. Of course, being a hooded nib, I don't think we have some flex to it, but I will test it for you guys. So you can see, no flex. Okay, it, uh, this is without pressure and this is with pressure. No line variance, no visible line variance. It appears to be quite a juicy knee, but I will show it to you. Yes. Uh, by the way, guys, the ink I am using, it is a Faber Castell pink ink, erasable. Again, the problem with that flow of ink. So it is what it is, guys. Let me see how good it is at signatures so let me do a signature a little bit of focus will be nice okay let us focus yes it does a quite quite nice signature because it is a wet writer the problem is with the ink flow again you can see a little a bit of uh, ink and it seems that we have the same same problem i don't know how to resolve this problem i will try to open it and maybe draw a little bit this uh, rod you can see here i've pushed it and i've done a little mistake because now i am uh, um, dirty so guys bear with me for a second i will take this here okay i will clean this okay so back to the writing board uh, it is quite quite nice and the only problem with it is this ink flow, but it seems to be okay now. Okay. Let me clean. Okay, this part. Uh, I've shown you the signature capabilities. Uh, yes, a very important aspect. Let me zoom on the paper. So, right here I want to test if we can reverse write with this type of nib. 
so reverse writing you can see it can uh, reverse right i believe this this is an extra fine and the nib the steel nib it is just a simple fine so an extra fine and a fine it uh, it writes quite quite well i'm quite pleased with uh, the writing of this simple simple steel nib with bear in mind it doesn't have the iridium tipping but it uh, operates quite quite nice uh, i think i got from uh, polo a very very nice example and again i want to thank him for this i know that this is a rare rare fountain pen and it represents a quite quite nice country portugal so i like the fact that uh, every country in europe has at least one fountain pen producer and uh, this is part of the fountain pen industry in portugal and i'm quite proud to own one piece of uh, that distant distant country in my collection so guys let me tell you about the fox i think that i need a little zoom yes the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog the quick the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog it is interesting i don't know what i've done to to it but now it appears that i've solved that issue with the wetness but it transformed itself in a quite quite dry writer look the difference between this and this so a strange 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 mechanism i think it can be tuned but because of this plastic materials which uh, maybe at that time were quite nice but they aged badly this isn't a nice nice fountain pen it has some issues but i think that they can be resolved i'm sure that uh, this was a bargain back when it was new uh, and uh, i'm told by polo it is a bargain now as a vintage product i think you can buy this for under five euros but the problem is that this is a very very rare fountain pen because as you can see it is quite quite a fragile fountain pen and i'm not so sure it was producing vast vast numbers so the quick brown folks jumps over the lazy dog this was my review of a wonderful wonderful fountain pen i want to thank again my fellow youtube influencer it is an honor to collaborate with him when i started this channel i remember that i watched his videos uh, the waski squirrel videos and uh, uh, other other influencers and it was an inspiration for me to start my own channel so thank you thank you again uh, i didn't back then uh, it was an honor uh, and when i received this from you it was uh, like a christmas morning so thank you my friend thank you all my viewers for watching this interesting interesting uh, review in my point of view if you've enjoyed this please subscribe to my channel wherever you are guys i want to wish you to have a nice day i want to thank you for your time we will see each other at the next episode till then bye bye and god bless